Shabbat Shalom, welcome to our beautiful sanctuary. Tonight, Marilyn Rosen will be leading the service with me. And I can already hear beautiful harmonies. So keep singing, keep singing with me and Ms. Marilyn. We turn to page 120 as we welcome Shabbat. With candle blessings, I invite Bernice from to, to light the candles. That doesn't work. It's, it's not that destroying not the place. Stable. No, it's not. We don't need the candles to call them. It's not stable. No. The candle. No. Amen. And please join us. to page 123, 123, and if it's your custom, please rise for Kiddush. <laughs> Please turn to page 133 and 134 for Psalm 98. And I hope you will read with me. A psalm, sing to Adonai a new song, for God has worked wonders. God's right hand, God's holy arm has won God victory. Adonai has manifested God's victory, has displayed God's triumph in the sight of the nations. God was mindful of God's steadfast love and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth beheld the victory of our God. Raise a shout to Adonai, all the earth. Break into joyous songs of praise. And then on page 134. Sing praise to Adonai with the lyre, with the lyre and melodious song, with trumpets and the blast of the horn, raise a shout before Adonai the ruler. Let the sea and all within it thunder, the world and its inhabitants. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains sing joyously together at the presence of Adonai, for God is coming to rule the earth. God will rule the world justly, and its peoples with equity. And please join us with Ms. Morle David, uh, Psalm of David on page 136, 136. Yeah, 
turn to page 138 from the Hadudi. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. And on verse 9, you will stand and meet the Sabbath bride. Uh, we learn from Kabbalist and Sfat. Uh, they used to go out in the fields before Shabbat starts. So they would be the first one to greet Shabbat. So please join me in the Hadudi. And join me on page 144 with the Hatsi Kaddish, 144. <laughs>
Could you please turn to page 149 and read the section in the middle? And join me, please. This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it, we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch hata Adonai hama'ariv aravim. Now, would you turn to page 151 and join me in the very, very, very bottom of the page? Torah is what God has revealed to us and what we discern of God. Ideas and ideals, laws and mitzvot, our religious heritage. It unfolds our memories of Abraham and Sarah, of Moses and Miriam and the prophets. It is legislation and explanation, allowing questions that challenge, answers that inspire, all a quest for meaning. It is our way of life, a path for our souls, and the design for a better world. Page 154 together. <laughs> join me on page 157 at the top of the page. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. <laughs>
חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוי ישראל. Please turn to page 161 and join me at the top of the page. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace, and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch Hata Adonai, Hapore Sukkot Shalom, Aleinu V'al Kol Amo Yisrael, V'al Yerushalayim. We continue with the singing of the Shamro on the next page. <laughs> Continue on page 164, as we reached the center of our prayer, the fila, we rise and join, please join me on page 164. <laughs> Oh. 
And please be seated. Would the congregation please turn to page 173 and read with me at the very, very, very bottom of the page. The meaning of Shabbat is to celebrate time rather than space. Six days a week, we live under the tyranny of things in space. On Shabbat, we try to become attuned to the holiness of time. It is a day on which we are called upon to share in what is eternal in time, to turn from the results of creation to the mystery of creation, from the world of creation to the creation of the world. And now would you please turn to page 175 and read with me the center section. Ever present one, may we, your people Israel, be worthy in our deeds and our prayer. Wherever we live, whatever we seek you, in this land, in Zion restored, in all lands, you are our God, whom alone we serve in reverence. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sha'otcha Levadcha Bira Na'avot. Please join me with Shalom Raf.
take a few moments for silent prayer. this point in the service we turn to page 371 it's page 371 and we pray for those who are in need of healing healing your body and healing of spirit when my eyes meet your eyes please say the name of the person who's in need of healing And those at home. We add those in our community who are in need of prayer, prayer for healing, prayer for <clears throat> healing your spirit, healing your body, 
Shayna Esther Batruhel, Laura Braun, Stephen Brandt, Rini Feingold, Irving Menes, Gabriel Berger, Brian Mansfield, Michael Shartok, Miriam Nemitz, Valerie Brownstein, Liz Steinberg, Stephen Brieger, Carol Brieger, Linda Champion, Jamie Rosenzweig, um, Shanna Pius, Joseph Ben Miriam, Franz Schoenfeld, Ryman Condon, Jen Palmer, Nancy Zavaki, Lynn Sharpman, Yol David Ben Mordechai, Mary Israel, Asher Ben Hirsch Befega, Menachem Ruben Ben Bluma, and Paul Radberg. We take to heart all of the names that we mentioned and we pray for their speedy recovery. And please join me in singing Misha Berach. So we are very thrilled tonight, um, Marilyn Rosen will share an interactive story. I'm not sure if everybody knows that Marilyn is actually a professional storyteller. And tonight uh, she will share a story that she picked by Barbara Rush. And just a few words uh, um, about the author. Uh, Barbara uh, Rush is the author of the book of Jewish women's tales as well as 12 other books in, on Jewish art, history, and folklore. As a storyteller, she was sent by the US, United States government to teach storytelling abroad. And she also went to Israel, where she helped to develop the first course for professional tellers in Israel. Barbara is a recipient of the Sydney Taylor Book Award. So tonight, Marilyn will share one of her stories. So I hope that you will help me tell this tale. And what I need from you is to participate with your mouths. I'm going to divide you into three groups because this is what I call my vowel story. So this little section over here will be the vowel A, but I hope that you will respond with ah to make the story go along. So we'll practice it once. Ready? One, two, three. That's very good. Oh, you guys are perfect. Okay, so the second group is going to be the group in the back that begins with the Rabbi Katz's row. And so you would be the vowel E. And so that's pretty much just E. So if you would practice it just one time along with me, one, two, three. Okay, that was not very enthusiastic, but I'll just, I'll chalk it up to it's your first time. Okay, the next group is the, oh, that's you guys over here, yeah. And you'll see in the story, O oh, doesn't quite fit. So you're more, uh-oh. Yes, and I didn't say one, two, three, okay. 
Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Oh, very good. Okay. So this is my vow story from Barbara Rush's collection of folk tales. A long time ago, when all the best stories really were created, there was a mother bird who was going south with her children for the winter. But her children had been born off season and they weren't as strong as they should be. They came to a very wide river and the mother bird was pretty certain that none of her three little children could make it across by themselves. So she decided that she would carry each one on her back one at a time across the river. The first little bird, that's you guys in a minute. The first little bird was very excited because he knew that he would be seeing the world from high above without having to expend any energy at all. So he hopped on his mother's back and she went straight up into the air and then she leveled out. This little bird was so impressed with the scenery. He said, to his left and then he turned to his right and again he said he was just overwhelmed so again he said he was so busy and involved in looking at the scenery and saying that his mother finally turned around and said would you stop making so much noise you're distracting me and while we're talking I have a question for you when I am old and unable to fly across this river by myself Will you put me on your back much as I am carrying you? Well, the first little bird, he was so busy saying, he really didn't hear what his mother said. And you know how some children are, their first reaction when they hear a question is not to say yes, it's to say no. That's exactly what this first little bird said. He said, no. His mother turned around to him and said, what? You would disrespect me? You would not follow one of the commandments and honor your mother? And with that, the mother bird turned sideways and that first little bird fell off her back and began falling right through the air, still saying, ah, yes, it was so frightening. It took him a while to get his brain together. This far away from the river, he finally spread his wings and made his way across to the other side. Now his two siblings had watched what had happened. In their memory, their mother had never done anything to hurt them. She was always so nurturing. They were very confused. The mother came over to the other shore and motioned for the second little bird, that's you guys in the Rabbi Katz's area, to get on her back. The second little bird, she was pretty scared. This was gonna be pretty awful. What if her mother did it again? And so to herself, she kept saying, e yes, what would she do? The mother motioned for her to come forward and to get on her back. And then she flew straight up into the air and she leveled out. This second little bird was saying to herself, and then again, and you can say it louder. Yes! She was so frightened. She moved her little rear end from side to side to side, thinking to herself the whole time. Until finally, her mother said, would you stop squirming like that? It's really hard for me to concentrate and fly across this great river. But as long as we're talking, I have a question for you. If I, when I am old and not strong enough to fly across this river by myself, will you carry me on your back much as I am carrying you? Oh, the second little bird to herself again said, this is it, this is it. This was the question that made her mother throw her brother off her back. But what was the answer? Oh, the second little bird knew her brother very well. And she knew that her brother would probably have said no. So the second little bird said, yes. Her mother turned to her and said, what? You would lie to me? And with that, she moved her body sideways 
And the second little bird fell right off her back, down, down, down towards the river, this time out loud saying, yes. yes. But halfway down, because she was expecting it, she managed to put her wings out in the air and fly herself all the way to the other shore. Now, you guys are left, right? The third little boy, yes. Uh-oh is right. The third little bird had seen it happen twice and knew it was gonna happen again. And so he thought he could probably make the trip by himself. He told his mother and she mm -mm 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 -mm, indicated that he had to get on her back too. So he did, but to himself he was saying, yeah, yeah, the worst was gonna come. He was determined not to be thrown off his mother's back. So he took his little claws and he dug in as deep as he could. His mother went straight up into the air. She leveled out. He dug those claws in saying to himself the whole time, oh. he dug harder and harder till finally his mother turned around and said, my goodness, would you stop doing that? You would draw blood if I had any. But now that we're talking, I have a question for you. When I am too old and can't really fly across this river myself, will you put me on your back much as I have put you on mine? And the third little bird said out loud, did you say no, said the mother bird, oh! I didn't say anything at all, said the third little bird. And the third little bird began to think. One of his siblings must have said yes. And one of his siblings must have said no. So what was the right answer? Finally, he said, mother, when I am older, I hope that I will have a family. And I may have three children who don't have the strength to fly across this river by themselves. I may have to carry them on my back one at a time as you have done. I don't know if I will have the energy or the strength to carry you too. And then the third little bird dug his little claws even harder into his mother's back, closed his eyes and waited for what was gonna happen next. but nothing happened. His mother turned to him and said, that was the right answer. I've been waiting for that. I'm setting this example for you so that you would do this to your children. And with that, the mother bird did not turn sideways, did not throw the third little bird off her back, but continued all the way to the distant shore. So that is kind of the end of the story, but there's a couple of vowels that we didn't use, I and you. And I got to thinking about that, especially at this time of year when there's so many traditions that we're carrying on. So I hope and pray that you and I will give the next generation the strength and support that they need so that they can support and have the strength to carry on for the generation to follow. Thank you all. Hmm. Well, thank you, Marilyn. It was welcome, um, entertaining <laughs> and enjoyable. There was a message. There's always a message right, right. in Jewish stories, you know. Entertaining, enjoyable, and a good lesson, yes. and a good lesson for us to learn. Thank you. You're Thank you for sharing your talent with us. It's a talent to tell a story. We turn to page 586. It's 586 as we rise for Aleinu.
turn to page 598. 598. Uh, before we recite Kaddish Yatom, Mourn is we remember those who died in the recent, in the recent days. Bobby Johnson, husband of Leslie Lopez, Robert Katz, brother of Rabbi Allen and, and Jen Katz, Maria Shurpak, Shupak, the one who was killed in a Tel Aviv, in, a, in Israel in a, in, a, uh, in an attack. Tamir Abihai, who also was killed in Israel, and Michael Ladijan also died in Israel of the attack. Moti Ashkenazi. These all four died in Israel. We remember those whose yurtzeit fall on the Shabbat. <clears throat> Stanley Abrams, Ella Anderson, Gerald Berg, Kelvin Berger, Jenny Berman, Natalie Chekhov, Alan DeMeo, Renee Gimbel, Louis, Louis Goldberg, Millie Goldenscher, Robert Kaplan, Sam Kaufman, C. Light, Helen Lipton, Leonard Mass, Ansel Marblestone, Fanny Mazur, Sarah Orbach, Irma Pikorovsky, Leroy Perkins, Herbert Rabinovich, Lana Schiffman, Josephine Schwartz, Myrna Silver, Leonard Stoller, Elizaveta Yurovska, Moshe Zaydel. If you have a name you would like to mention tonight, you're observing your site, please say it out loud. And from home. Shaul Cohen. Together, uh, as we think of our loved ones, uh, we recite Kaddish Yatom on page 598. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to, all, to us and to all Israel. We say together, Amen. And please be seated. So a few announcements. Tomorrow, Torah study uh, at 9.15, Shabbat morning service, 10.30. And very exciting Hanukkah Bazaar, an artful Hanukkah happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. Join us for a nice evening on Sunday morning um, school and also Hanukkah Bazaar and Hanukkah happening, the continuation. Um, and Sprout, Torah, Chanting Club, Kesher, the whole Megillah. Next Friday night is Hanukkah Musical Shabbat. So join us for the musical service. And next Saturday, the same schedule as tomorrow, 9.15 and 10.30. Also, don't forget to register for dinner, December 18th, the Hanukkah dinner at 5.30, December 18th. Also, for those who would like to light the their candles for Hanukkah, every night we'll have Zoom lighting uh, Hanukkiyot. So look for information on our website if you would like to join people and light candles together every Hanukkah night, every night of Hanukkah. Any announcements? Additional? Well, thank you again, Marilyn, for leading the service and a, and a very insightful story. 
I was going to invite everyone who was preparing sh schmoozing Shabbat to do the hala, but I, I see only Jerry. Everybody in the kitchen. Right? Together. We turn to page six twenty five, six twenty five for Adonalam. Please join me. Adonalam, Asher Malach, Asher Malach. Shabbat Shalom and join us for the Onyx Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you all.